mind, we are doing some cooking today, but you know me, I'm not doing any cooking. They are the three chefs. Please welcome Randy Feltis, Jason Parsons, Massimo Capra. How are you doing? Good. Although you always do make me do a little something something. A little something. Huh? Today the theme is very interesting. So we're going to be dealing with peaches and peppers. Mm -hmm. One doesn't really have anything to do with the other, would you say? But they do work well oh, together. Yeah, they work. Do they work they well do. together? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Prove yeah. me wrong then. Uh, we are going to start with a soup, and I find that this soup is, is very interesting. Never heard of anything like it. What kind of soup is it? We're doing a roast tomato and peach soup. Tomato Ooh. and peach? Is that normal? Mm. That's very normal. Is it? <laughs> My world is very normal. Is that normal? Which one? <laughs> well, in our world it is, but I don't think in the, you know, okay. the Kama household right, it's normal. And you might, well, well. you might see it as a chilled soup, but I find that chilled soups sometimes go over like lead balloons. So we're doing a I hot agree. soup today. Okay, I'm happy about that. You like, see, yeah, it's working I like already. That. We're already leaning in the right direction. Yeah, All right, let's okay. do it. You want to do it up? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. let's start with a hot pot. We're going to do a mint pesto as well. So, John, wow. I don't know who's feeling tough today. Okay, I, I do. Come on. You oh, feel tough? Oh, there yeah. you go. Let's start off with the pesto. So, you, you we got, got some uh, ramps in there. Huh? Some ramps Sorry, in there. No, uh, we put those what in are they the break. Called? Garlic scapes. Garlic, Garlic scapes. scapes. Yeah. And everyone wants to see these babies. <laughs> yeah. right? looks, we see those around the market. Sure, mm. throw one in there. Right? Great. And you see those around the market, you don't know what to do with them. Cook with them, put butter on them, salt, pepper, whatever you want to do. Today we're going to put in the pesto and mortar, we're going to smash it up a bit, and it's going to give that raw garlic kind of punch, punch. in the face kind of thing, right? <laughs> Jeez. We're also going to add a little bit of pistache. Nice. Yeah, put some, man. Eh? And then don't be afraid of the olive oil, Massimo, whenever no. you're ready. Really? Yeah, I know, I know. Come on. I'm afraid of olive oil. Really? I even brought the Italian stuff you for you today. You tell me that, huh? You so even Massimo, have a good one. Okay, put some go muscle on. into that, would you? Well, you have to. <laughs> when you're using a pestle and mortar, you have to beat it a little bit. That's huh? right, it's very crimson. But it just brings out the raw flavor, right? Yeah. So we start with a little bit of olive oil for our soup. And look at this. Jason's favorite ingredient. Yes. Shallots. Shallots. Do it. Lots of them, right? That's it. A little bit of garlic. Now, when you're making a soup, you need a lot of flavor builders, right? It's not just the tomato and peach. It's all about just giving it like something to start, right? Yeah. You start off the garlic and the schlots, and you and I always start our soups that way. And then we're gonna caramelize that up a little bit, get the flavor sweating a little bit, yeah. right? And we always do this thing in the culinary world we call the deglaze. You know what the deglaze is, Tracy? I should know by now, <laughs> but I do not. <laughs> Should I touch you yes, yes, there? Jason was kind <laughs> enough, you, you see. He, uh, he I, wasn't happy with my wine selection today, I, so he changed the, I, the label. I one love, phone call. Like, oh, hold <laughs> on, we gotta hold this <laughs> up so we can see it, and I don't know if you're gonna see it because it's a white um, label here. It did say some name that I can't even read out loud. Oh, it's a good name. Now it says Pillar States, and there's a happy face on it. <laughs> nice label, it's very, very professional. Well, we're thinking about rebranding, well, yes. Yeah, yeah, I like it. it. Yeah. Shameless very nice. You gotta admit, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. At least it's Canadian, right? It's still a great wine. <laughs> it's a great wine. So we're just going to hit it with a little bit of white wine. Mm. Deglaze all those flavors out, right? Spot. Nice. All right. Then we're going to go with our tomatoes. And now this time of year, you're going to find the ripened tomatoes. They're going to be ready to go. So just chuck them right in, right? Your peaches, you could roast these in the oven if you wanted a different kind of flavor complex. But I find it's not really necessary if you add enough wine. Mm. And wine is never short around my house, so we throw it in. Now you don't have to cut those any uh, finer than that. You can put them in nice and No, big because and we're gonna we're gonna sweat this out. We're gonna cook this soup out for about an hour, right? Oh, so we have okay. lots of liquid. If All you right. want to keep it vegetarian, a can of tomato soup or tomato juice isn't yeah. really an issue. And if you don't, you can put chicken stock in or even veg stock. Yes. Jason, you want to pass me a little bit of the, the chicken stock? Of course. We'll throw that in. Yeah. All right. But Perfect. these are really simple, simple flavor binders. And what you're gonna find is the sweetness of the peach is gonna work really, really well with the acidity of the tomato. So everyone's normally used to tomato soup and sometimes it has a little acidic taste to it. Yeah. But the roundness of the peach is just gonna balance it all out. So we let okay. this sweat out for like 45 minutes maybe? Yeah. yeah. That sound good? You got a nice chunky there, so you want to let the flavors develop, right? right? Okay. We have to add a few more flavors. So what we're gonna do right now is called a spice bomb. Yes. Spice bomb. Spice bomb. Spice bomb. Oh, see, I have a spice bag, but I like spice bomb. bag. The bomb <laughs> sounds a little cooler. Sounds, sounds way it? better. So we have some star anise. So a little bit of like the <clears throat> licorice kind of flavor. Yeah. I know. Mm. What's that? Love Cinnamon. It. Love it. Nice. Jason loves that stuff. So break okay. this up. Star anise is awesome. Oh. And then we got some fresh yeah. bailies. Yep. Nice. So you can find those at the grocery store now. Oh, I just poked them in my mouth. Watch your eyes. Ow! It's not good though. It's a rough place, this kitchen. Right? And then basically just roll it up, take some butcher twine, and tie it this way. When we puree our soup, we're not going to have the anise floating around. We're not going to have right. the cinnamon floating around. And if you want to take it one step further, which I never do because I kind of get sloppy sometimes, yeah. is you could tie it around the handle of the pot. 
Yeah. Wow. Oh, in I larger like that. quantity, that could work because then you'll never lose it. Yeah. But you know, we're feeling a little risque today, so see you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> throw it all in Just and then make the apprentices there. pick it out. That's not yeah, that either. Can... Massimo, how is our uh, pesto? Pesto is done. That's beautiful. I think uh, this is nice. the way you want it. Massimo, that's I think great. So. Look at this. Look at this. See? Not that I'm that's, shocked um, at all, but that's good. All you need is one world-class chef and a little bit of muscle. You get a, you get a pesto in four minutes. There you go. Nice. There you go. <laughs> all right. So magically, the Power TV, 45 minutes goes by. This cooks down. We give it the immersion blender, right? Yeah. Take the spice bomb out, and voila. Nice. Here now, we could go. we do this also so we room have our temperature? Tomato we can do it room temperature. You could serve it cold. You mm. really could. You could chill it down. I prefer it hot because I really want to put like a grilled cheese sandwich or something like that in there. Mm. So what I need you to do, Jason, mm -hmm. is I got some spreadable goat cheese there. Done. Just do up a crostini there. Now right. am I doing this as we should do it or is the way my portion? Do, do it your, your portion, way. yeah. <laughs> right, you do it your way. All right. Make it good, man. Just want to make sure I got a little bit of cheese yeah. on there. The best thing about soup to me is the bread. Well, as I love the Tracy, bread. it's all about the bread because we're going to serve extra crostinis with this because one crostini is never enough for a thing never, of soup, Never, right? never, never. I need, oh, Jace. <laughs> no, that's good, Jace. It's a good portion. Good. <laughs> Perfect. So today oh, we're serving a goat cheese going. crostini with tomato nice. soup. <laughs> That is beautiful. <laughs> right, Give me another one. We can keep going. We just keep making you a sandwich. Keep okay, it up. I did take real cheese sambo. And then, mm. if it doesn't fall apart, you know, no, look at Jason. Look at the it stands up. It works. Right on. On. Nice. Yeah. You might want to do your bread a little thicker if you want to put more cheese on it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And then an this fresh uh, pasta with the great big garlic bite right yeah. on there. Looks good, folks. We can what splash some olive oil on nice top. Work, nice. Right? Serve at a table right like that. Extra cappuccini to wait again. All right, we are putting all of our recipes on today's show on our website, that's cityline.ca.